Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again. This is part 8 in a series of videos that make up a tutorial called Build a Website with Gatsby. And in this video what we're going to do is implement pagination. And it's not too hard to do with Gatsby just because Gatsby gives us a lot for free uh, in their documentation. And if you go to their documentation page, you can see that the whole page is really short and in fact they don't give you everything you need to implement this uh, I would say successfully but they give you a good start and if you're good at figuring things out you know you've been developing for a little while you're probably going to be able to um, follow along with this fairly easily but at the same time they don't really go into detail about what they're doing uh, behind the scenes. I don't intend to do that much either, but at least if we go through it slowly, you might see in that process um, for yourself some of the various things that might be happening uh, under the hood, so to speak. And so after the last video, I, I went ahead and, and did a couple of things. I added a link to an archive page right? because as it stands now, we only have links to specific pages or tags pages, right? And these will give you all of the posts under a certain tag, like for example, the entertainment tag. All right, but I'd like to have a complete archive of all posts, and I don't want to have that on the home page. I want to keep the home page fairly uncluttered. So I would click on here and be able to go to an archive page, which we haven't created yet. All right, and then in that archive page, we would like to load just the first three posts uh, in the list, right? Starting with the most recent. And then we'll have a button that, or a link that if we click on it, it will take us to the next three posts and so on and so forth. And we do that because if we tried to load, say, thousands of posts, if we had thousands of markdown files accumulated over the years, and we had to load all those thousand uh, markdown files in at one time, we might have to wait quite a while before we can interact with the page itself and say click on a link to a post. So to decrease loading times, we'll just load a few at a time. All right, so again, oh, also there's one other thing I did. So if you take a look at my posts folder, I've added three more posts. So I'll have a total of seven posts. That way we can look at three total archives pages rather than just the two that we would have. <clears throat> and why we're doing that will probably become clear to you uh, as we go on. So going to the Gatsby documentation page, for adding pagination. And don't forget Gatsby uh, has moved to gatsbyjs.com. Usually a Google search will take you right there, but just in case, uh, don't forget. I'll put this link in the description under the video as well. All right, so the first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to create some pages, right? And these will be archives pages. And to do that, rather than create them individually, of course, we would like to create them programmatically uh, using a template. So that template that we're going to create, and here they've called theirs blog list template. We're going to call ours something different. That template is going to give us archives pages starting from the second, third, or starting from the second page and continuing on three, four, five, six, seven. And then I would like to have a special page just called archive that would be the home page for the archives page, since we're not actually using the blog home page or the website home page as the place where we're going to start our archives list. All right, so if you take a look down here, you, you see that they've got some code for your Gatsby Node.js. And since we're going to be programmatically creating pages, we'll need to update our Gatsby Node.js file. So go ahead and just copy everything they've highlighted here and then put that in your Gatsby node file. And uh, we'll just put it in under the place where we created pages for tags pages. All right, so this should be stra fairly straightforward. All right, we're just getting this from our um, GraphQL query here. All right, we don't, well, I would like to not have six posts per page, but three posts per page. And if we're, if we have a certain number of posts, in our case, it's going to be seven, we'll need to figure out how many total pages we need to create. 
right? So if we have seven posts and we have three posts per page, you can see that we'll need three pages. Sorry about the noise in the background. There's some uh, construction happening, as is always the case in Tokyo. So you can see right here, you calculate the total number of pages using the ceiling function. All right, I'm going to have to close that door. Sorry about that. Hold on a sec. Hate to close the door on such a nice summer day or late summer day, but unfortunately, well, hopefully we can get through this video quickly enough to where I don't sweat too much. So we use the ceiling function. We use the total number of posts and the total number of pages to calculate how many pages we'll need. Right? And you can see that if we have seven posts, we'll need three pages, right? Which means our third page will only have one post on it. Right, and then we'll create pages, right? We'll basically say for each page, right, we're going to use each page as an index, right? So index zero would be page one or the first page. And then for each index, we'll create a new page. Right? And then we're saying that if we're at the very first index, which means the home page, we'll just use the root to the home page. And in this case, it's going to be archive. And we're going to create that root in a second here. And so if our index is not zero, right? Like for example, if it's one, then we'll go to archive and then slash two, right? Because that'll be the second page of our archive. Now the path to our um, page template file is not going to be this one here. So let's go ahead and create in our templates folder a new file and let's just call it all posts and for now actually I'd like it to look just like the um, our uh, tags pages right so I don't think we can look at them now I think we're probably getting errors at this point let's take a look okay We go here you can see that our tags pages look like this right so I basically want our archives pages to look the same so if I just grab everything here in the tags file or the tag file paste it in here of course we'll get a few errors for example we can't have two queries with the same name so we'll call this all posts query and we don't need to filter by tag. All right, other errors we're getting here. Well, if we go up, we know that we need to change this to all posts. We don't need to, but we're going to. don't need this we don't need this and since we don't have tag header anymore let's just say all posts here all right so we shouldn't be getting any more errors from this file right now all right and you can see that we aren't Okay, so going back to the Gatsby node, let's go ahead and create a root to our uh, page template. And we'll do it the same way we did before. So you can see I've already done that here. Right, I've created something called archive template and I've given it a path to the file we've just created. So all we need to do is go down here and enter in. archive template. All right, I'm gonna have to shut one more window here. All 
Okay, so that'll get us to our page template. Now, we're passing in a limit, right? So we don't want to display any more posts per page than what we have here as the limit. And as we see here, it's already three. Skip is going to take us to the page we want to be on, right? So if we're on um, the, you know, the first page, then it will skip to the first page. Now you can see, like, say, for example, if we are on the first page, we would expect skip to be a uh, index. Well, actually, the first page we're going to call the home page, right? But in terms of these pages here, or in terms of what we're creating here, we're going to create pages that go into an array. The second element would actually be our second page, right? So that would still be index one, the second element, times three. So that would be skip equals three. And what that'll basically do is it'll say the last um, the last file or the last post will be post number three and everything from there on we're going to display and then we're going to only display three going forward. That's a bit difficult to understand, I know. If you've never in, um, implemented cursor-based pagination before on your own, it's not actually easy to understand the first time around. Once you do it a couple of times, it, it's a little bit easier to follow. But if you want to see cursor-based pagination implemented, um, I've done that in my full stack uh, Apollo GraphQL with Node and React tutorial series. So uh, you can find it in there. It might be video six, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, maybe I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. But for now, just accept that it's going to skip you right to the page you want to be on. And remember, all of this context is getting passed into your page template, so you can grab it through your uh, GraphQL query. <clears throat> Actually, it's being passed in as props, so you don't even need to worry about querying for it. And we'll see that in a few minutes here. All right, so we've done pretty much everything we need to do with Gatsby node for now. So go ahead and restart your dev server as you usually have to do. All right, so <clears throat> going to your homepage, Remember I told you I put this link in here, browse archive. I haven't created the uh, page that this goes to, right? So you can see if you look down at the bottom left of the, um, the page, you can see it says localhost uh, 8000 slash archive, right? So that root is already set up in the link, but we haven't actually added the page in our pages folder. So let's do that now. So we'll go in here and add a new file and just call it archive.js. Right, and then again, we can, well, let's just set up a simple component here. All right, and if we check out our link, it should work, but it doesn't. Ah, there it goes. All right, so got the beginnings of our archive page here.
let's just use also to keep things consistent everything inside our layout tag in our tags file I will have to change a few things. All right, so we don't have a query yet, so there's nothing to loop over, so we'll have to add that query. Let's go ahead and let's use this query here. Again, we need to give it a unique name. We don't want to limit it to 2000, we want to limit it to three. Now, the reason why we have to do it manually here is because we're, this is not a template page. This is actually just a regular page that we've created in the uh, Gatsby pages folder. So we're not going to get any of the context that we got uh, when we created our template pages in Gatsby node. All right, so we should have everything we need. I'm getting a few errors here. First of all, let's bring in image. I'm gonna use it for our thumbnails. Tag header, we're not going to use that. See all posts. Right now it says finally edges is not defined. We don't even need to worry about it, we know what we're going to get. So. And since I'm calling it posts here, I can call it posts here. All right, so if you take a look now, you can see we're on the archive page and we're seeing posts. And this is the most recent post. We're seeing the three most recent posts. Right, but we don't have any way of getting to the next three posts and of course the next three posts after that so now let's implement that or let's figure out a way to do that <coughs> excuse me and so what we can do is um well first we'll probably want to say something more than just all posts maybe let the um the reader know how many total posts we have. All right, so you can see down here in your post query, we're bringing in total count. So let's use that. So you can see that lets us know how many total posts we have. <coughs> now, since we're this is the this archive page, <coughs> this archive page is the home page for the archives. All right, we're not going to have any previous archives pages. We're only going to have next pages, right, or a next page. All right, so we'll need to figure out a way to get there. So let's manually set the current page equal to one because we know that the second element in our um, 
pages array that we created in Gatsby node should be, uh, it should take us to number two, even though the index itself is number one. We want it to display in our root as two. So print page equal to one. All right, we also have to manually set the post per page because we can't pass that in through the context here. So again, we're saying three. So we'll say the next page is going to be equal to the current page and then plus one. And the reason why I've made this into a string is because this is going to be a root that we pass into our link. All right, but we also need a way to check if there is a next page. For example, this is our home page. We're displaying the first three posts, but if we only have three total posts in our posts folder, then we shouldn't have a next page, which means we shouldn't display an arrow saying go to the next page, right? So we'll, we'll make a, a check for that. So you can define a value called has next page. Actually, we'll say if the total, right, the total number of posts is greater than posts per page, then that's what we have, right? We have our has next page value is true. If not, it's false. All right, so what we can do now is we can go down to here, all right, and we're going to say that if we have a next page, so we use some JavaScript here, then we'll add something, right? We'll add that link and we'll wrap it in a div. So. Interesting. Emmet doesn't seem to be working for me right now. All right, so we're going to use Gatsby link. It's an internal link. Right, inside of that, we'll use a span. And we'll just say next page. All right, and maybe we'd like an arrow or something to get us there. So I use HTML entities all the time. They're easy enough to use. So actually we need a right arrow. You can see I've already got it ready here. Let's just pop that in there. Okay, so anyway, if you go to your archive page, you can see that we're definitely getting that link uh, text displayed, right? Because we should have a next page, right? We have seven total posts. Uh, we don't want it to be over here on the left. I mean, at least I don't want it to be, so let's put it over here on the right. But since I'm using the style sheet, or I should be, <laughs> just to be safe, let's import it. I'm using the tags style sheet or the tag style sheet. I don't want to mess with that style sheet and I don't really want to create another one for this file. So, cause we're just, we've kind of hijacked that tag page. Let's go ahead and just use style inline CSS here. So, and then we'll say here, what? Float right. Okay, and that gets us over there. And of course, the most important part of this is we need our link. So remember that we created a root or a path, and that's right here. It's next page. So if you go down here, And you can see that it's made this a link. 
and you can see it down on the bottom left it goes to archive slash two so that means it actually will take you to the second page and it'll show you appropriately that it is page two of the archive all right, and actually what it's doing right now is it's displaying all of the posts because we haven't set it up yet. So let's go now to our um, post template. We're saying here that the limit should be 2,000, right? And that's why we're seeing all of the posts when we look at it. But of course, we don't want it to be that way. We want to use the page context, right? To let it, to, and we want to use the information we have in there to control how many posts get displayed. So that will be here in limit. All right. So first, just so that we can see the context, let's go ahead and log it to the console. All right. So page context is part of the overall props object. So if we go to that page, actually we're already there. You can see here is the page context object right here. So as uh, expected, it's passing in the current page, the, the limit, the number of pages, and the skip value. Right, and these are all coming from our Gatsby node file. So we just have to bring them in as GraphQL variables. And Gatsby actually gives us the code for that. So you don't have to be a GraphQL master to do this. And you can see it's right here. So to our query, we need to make sure we're bringing those variables in. And remember, this query is for our um, archive page template, which is all posts. And so we'll put that right here. Okay. So this limit right here will not be 2,000, but it'll be the limit that we bring in. And remember, we have to. We have to provide something, right, because we're requiring it here. You don't have to require it if you don't want to, but it's good practice to do so. And uh, you can see that we are providing the limit right here. Right, limit comes from post per page, and that is an integer as it should be. All right, so now we just need to add skip. So let's do that here. Okay, and it looks like our errors go away. And everything else should be all right. So now you can see that we are limiting our uh, posts to just three for that page. And if we go back to our archive homepage, right, we see we've got three here. Okay. So, as you can see, this is the second page uh, of our archives, right? So this would be the fourth, fifth, and sixth post. But as you can see that we have no way of going either backwards or forwards, right? So we're going to have to implement that logic right now. So if you go back. We already know what this is doing for us. You can get rid of that. All right, so first, you know, as, as we did before, we want to know where we're at, right? We want to have a current page uh, defined, right? And we can actually use the page context this time because we're bringing that information in from Gatsby node through the context. So let's just um, use a destructuring assignment and say let's 
get the current page and the total number of pages. From the page context All right and we can get that because we have the number of pages here right, and we're passing it in here and the current page here All right, and then we'll use that <coughs> to help us navigate All right so we need to know if there's a previous page right or are we on the first page All right so we're definitely on the first page when the current page is equal to one, right? We said that here, All right? So we'll set that up here as well. We'll say we are on the first page. Right? If the um, current page equals one. All right, so this is basically gonna give us a Boolean value, so. If it's false, then it's not the first page. <clears throat> and if it's not the first page, then we definitely want a link back to the first page or previous pages, basically. All right. Also, we want to know if we're on the last page. All right. Because if we're on the last page, we don't want an arrow to display saying go on to the next page. Right? People will click that and go crazy. And then that will say if the uh, current page equals the total number of pages, right? Both of these values we get through context, right? So if we have four pages <coughs> created um, in our Gatsby node file and we're already on page four, we should not see an arrow to a page five or six. All right, so now we need links to those pages, right? So for example, the previous page, and we can make a path calling it pre, preview, not per page. <laughs> Pre page, previous page. And that will be the current page. We'll, we'll check first, right? We'll say current page minus one is equal to one, right? That means if we are on page two, right, then we would want to go back to page one, which is the home archives page, right? So we'll set that here. Sorry, it's archive. Otherwise, then what we'll want to do is go to whatever the previous page is. In that case, it's going to be archives slash and then current page minus one. Right, and again, the reason why we're making it string is because it's a, a path to, it's a, a root. All right, and then finally, we'll want to look at the next page. All right, so. You can guess this is going to be current page plus one. <clears throat> also, don't forget <clears throat> the slash here. All right. So we've got all of these things we've defined, but we haven't used them. So let's use them now. So we we'll use them in roughly the same place we did on the archive homepage. All right, so first we'll check to see if we are on the first page or not. <clears throat> so we'll say if we're not on the first page, and we'll wrap our link in a div. Go to the previous page. 
And now we'll want a leftward arrow. So if you remember, we could get that from, we can use an HTML entity. this link to go to the right path and if you remember that was prev page and we'll want to make sure that this is on the left side so we'll say float left And let's just copy this down. Then we'll use the conditional is last. Of course, we want it to float to the right. Eight five nine four. Let's just copy it in case. Actually, we don't want that there. Somehow got rid of that semicolon. Don't do that. And then remember we called our path next page. Oh, not here, sorry. Here. All right, so how are we looking? So you can see we've got them there. So if I click previous page, I'm back to the home page, and it gives me the most recent post. Next page brings me to the second page, and I know it's at least the second page because I can go back and I can go forward. And if I click forward, wow, what happened there? Go back, refresh. All right, there should be another post there. Right, let's go ahead and stop and restart. figure out why this isn't taking us to that page. Now I see this is one of those ridiculous mistakes that you'll often, or at least I often make. I was calling it archive in one instance and archives in another. I guess because in other projects I've used archives versus archive. So hopefully that fixes it. So let's go ahead and take a look back at our page. All right, so if we, we're here again on the second page, we can see that here. If we click on next page, that did not fix it. All right, so now things are just hopelessly broken. Is that what's going on here? Okay, so. In these cases, because you're interacting with the Gatsby node file, it could be that you might need to restart your dev server. Your dev server. Other things you can do too, as well, or one other thing you can do too, it's kind of a hail mary, is just to do a Gatsby clean. So let's go ahead and first of all do a Gatsby clean. And then restart the dev server. 
Now hopefully this gets everything working. It's always frustrating when you see an obvious mistake and you fix it, but it somehow doesn't seem to get you where you want to be. So hopefully this works. All right, so go back to our web page now. All right. That's page two and page three. Good. So Gatsby Clean saved the day. Or just restarting our dev server did. All right, so that's it. All right, we finally did this through a little bit of a, a painful process, but we got there. So that's pagination, right? You make it so that you're only loading three posts at a time, right? So your linking is really quick. It doesn't take a long time to see a post. If I want to go to another page and quickly view a post, I can do that. I can go next, next, click, it's there, back. All right, so we've got pagination implemented and I'm not sure uh, when I'll get the next video up, but maybe in the next video, if there is going to be another video, we'll take a little bit of a deeper dive into, say, the uh, Gatsby node file because there's so much you can do with it. Right? And there's a lot that goes on behind or under the hood. A lot that Gatsby takes care of for you, but they also give you a lot of freedom to customize your, your uh, project if you're brave enough to to go deep into the Gatsby Node APIs and try to use them. So if I do another um, video, I might do that one next. Uh, otherwise, if you're interested in seeing anything else, let me know in the comments uh, below the video. And until then, uh, thank you as always for joining me. Cheers.